it's Laura and I have a scrap lift Sunday for you today and this one is a really fun layout by Missy Widden and it's a mixed media layout which means we're gonna do some painting and I brought out my shimmers because that is what Missy Widden often uses and as you saw in the layout at the beginning it's a mixed media backed cut file situation now I'm going to do a different setup than she did but the technique is the same so I'm going to paint behind where these cut files are going to go and I've already added these photos to frames that also have little butterflies cut out of them and we're going to go ahead and mark the places for the mixed media now in retrospect probably should have done the pencil a lot lighter than I did because it uh, it's hard to erase once you've painted on top of it turns out <laughs> And I just ended up trying to cover those lines up as much as possible with the cut files later. Now, the cut files, once I add the paint, are very visible in person, but on camera they do kind of disappear. So <laughs> you'll see them much better at the end. And I'm just starting with the Pull Me Closer. It's just a really beautiful blue and kind of doing a watercolory look here, adding water with my water brush to lighten the color. Now, my thought process was to go lighter at the bottom, darker at the top. So kind of an ombre effect. In the end, I wish I had just stuck with a lighter look because the thicker, darker paint at the top just doesn't look quite as dreamy as I was hoping for it to look. <laughs> it looks a lot like acrylic paint. <laughs> <laughs> so that wasn't quite what I'd had in mind and I do wish I'd gone just lighter all the way through but it's fine this one here I think is called Christmas cheer and it's a very gold kind of a yellow color and then this one is Pinko de Mayo and then the very last color is pixie dust which is kind of a white and but they're all very sparkly they're blings and uh, just the regular shimmers paints so they're all very sparkly but I do wish I had gone softer more watercolory than with the vibrant at the top because the watercolor ones at the bottom just worked better for this technique in my opinion <laughs> now here is that pixie dust and it's gonna add a really fun effect inside of the colors uh, it just adds like this little pop of little white splatters but are also shimmery inside of all of the other colors which actually works out really nicely and created a very cool effect and then i'm bringing in a smaller brush to do a little bit of each color around the butterfly so a little bit of like a light pink splatter around the pink areas and then light blue around the blue and gold around the gold etc i will say that i love the look of mixed media but I am very impatient with the dry time and this took a long time to dry. There is a lot of paint on this paper, my friends. <laughs> and in the end, it looks beautiful and I love it. And I think that's often the case. I've heard other mixed media artists call this the ugly stage. <laughs> and then once you start adding to it, it gets better. It gets better, I promise. Once you start covering up Maybe the areas you don't like quite as much, and <laughs> it looks a lot better. I am dabbing in up the puddles. The areas on the outside there are puddling a little bit, and I don't want that. I don't want a huge variety of color or range of color within each butterfly. So to keep them pretty similar, I'm just going to dab up a lot of those puddling areas. Now it's dry. Obviously, this is much later in the day. <laughs> it is evening at this point, and the colors are a little brighter than I expected. I was thinking they would be dry a little bit lighter. They dry darker. I should have known better. I didn't, but <laughs> they are very vibrant. And as you can see, the ones at the top look a lot more unintentionally splodgy. And the ones at the bottom kind of have more of that watercolory flowy look that was really was going for. And now that I've got all of the cut files glued down, like I said, they are a little hard to see on camera at this point, but you will see them in the close-ups at the end. And I'm bringing my photos back in. I'm gonna go ahead and add some foam tape behind them to lift them up away from all of the embellishments that are going to be crowded around them. I have discovered that when I do 9 by 12 layouts, like this one for my twin daughter Olivia's album, 
I tend to fill these layouts far more than I do my 12 by 12s. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know what it is about a 9 by 12 layout that I feel like I need to fill it. I put a lot of embellishments on this layout. And while I do love the result, it, it's a lot. <laughs> I can recognize that it is quite a lot. I have grabbed this bowl of leftover fussy cut pieces. Quite often I will fussy cut a whole page of butterflies, especially butterflies, and sometimes florals, and use, say, a quarter or a half of them on a project. Well, there's always leftover. So I dump them into this little bowl and leave it on my desk, and then I try to remember to grab from this bowl if I need a butterfly or a floral, just one or two off. And in this case, I purposely did a butterfly layout, so then I could use up quite a few of the butterflies in this bowl. Some of them are acetate from Kaiser Craft, those are the black ones, and they're left over from a previous kit. Some of them are these Simple Stories butterflies from the I Am collection, which is left over from a butterfly layout that I did, and they're just sitting on my desk, so they need to get used. They need to get used, and I tried to keep the blues with the blue butterflies, and the yellow with the yellow butterflies, pink with pink, kind of keep them together in a color block so that it maybe wasn't quite as overwhelming to the page. <laughs> and I did put one of the butterflies directly in the middle of the cut file because I did feel like the cut file had just kind of disappeared into that paint and wasn't standing out like I was hoping it would. So by adding a butterfly to the center of that cut file, it more clearly defined that area. And then I'll add in extra butterflies around those colors. So blue with blue, etc. And I added quite a lot of butterflies <laughs> onto this layout. I, I am a big fan of butterflies. I love them. I have loved them for a very long time. And I love seeing them in person. They're probably the only bug that I like. And I have held one and it's just, they're such a cool creature and so beautiful, so graceful. And I really, really enjoy them. So butterfly explosions, I enjoy just as much as floral explosions. Now I'm bringing in some sequins and what I'm doing is just pulling out the butterfly pieces, honestly, and just adding in just a few of them to had something other than paper on the page. Because I've got a lot of paper and then I've got a couple of acetate pieces. And I thought bringing in these little sequin butterfly shapes would be a nice little addition for something different and also a different size of butterfly. But they're also kind of detailed, so it's not just a punched butterfly, it's actually a sequin that has some defined details to it. So added two to the pink, one to the yellow, which I could have put the yellow one in the middle and in retrospect probably should have, <laughs> but for some reason I didn't want to use it on this. Adding in some little bits and pieces, these wood veneer are from L Studio, and they are left over from a previous stash kit. And then the little chipboard pieces came from a hip kit alpha, and I had popped out all of the alphas already and just had those little pieces left, so I popped them into a bowl on my desk so I would use them. And here, they're getting used. <laughs> I'm just adding some wood veneer hearts in a couple of places just to break up the bold colors because wood veneer is a great neutral to add to a busy layout. And then when I grabbed these thicker type letters, they're puffy letters from Pink Fresh. These came in the Joyful Day collection, which is in my stash kit this month. And I saw the word dream and I thought that's perfect. <laughs> Let's use that. That's absolutely perfect. Brought in the puffy stickers for just one more minor little bit of embellishing because there's really not a lot of room left on here, but I wanted to add in some words. There was no other words on here and I felt like I'm not gonna be able to get journaling onto this layout. It is packed. So let's just go ahead and add in some of these puffy word phrases and match them to the colors as well, just like Missy did on her layout because she had little color blocks by her photos that matched the paint behind it. And so I wanted to have that same technique happening as well. I am gonna go ahead and cut off, I think it was half an inch, half an inch at the side and the bottom, and then I'm going to back it with this beautiful paper from Pink Fresh Studio, and I'm going to use the pink side, there we go. So the back side of this paper is this gorgeous pink, and I thought that that was perfect because it draws your eye to the title, which then draws your eye to the photos. And again, I have done 
dark photos on a very light and bright background so that difference of those dark photos draws your attention to them. So once I get this in place, that is it. This layout is done. Be sure to check out Miranda's. Her link's in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, bye!